So it's been a minute, but we're back with another episode review of Big Brother 26. This is going to be episode 12, 13, and 14, kind of, because I did miss Sunday's episode review. But it's only because, like, I'm pretty sure everyone that, almost everyone that watches it, like the groups that I'm in and people on Twitter, was just like, oh my god, this episode's getting delayed so much, like... Uh, we're not about to stay up for this because I literally had to work the next day and even though like I think it ended up coming on at like 10 34 or something like that and I would be up to watch it but I just I didn't think that I could stay up to watch it take notes on it review it edit it post it like that just it was not realistic I would have went to bed at like 1 a.m. maybe later and I didn't really I wasn't in the mood for that, so I decided to just not do the review for that one, and then Tuesday's episode was a recap, So, and I had a feeling it would be a recap, but then I watched reviews, and everyone's like, it's a recap, so I really didn't feel like doing a recap of a, a recap. A recap of a recap. I didn't really think that made any sense. But I will say something short about both. Uh, Tuesday's episode, I saw that it was Cody, Taylor, and Jag. I'm not that big a fan of Cody. I like him on YouTube, though. I like Taylor, she's cool, and she's from Michigan, right? I think she's from Michigan, so shout out to her. That would be really embarrassing if she's not actually from Michigan. And then Jag, I wasn't that big a fan of his, but shouts out to Jag because he is the first winner to win from being evicted in the same season. So that's cool. I always thought, like, who's going to be, like, the first winner to be evicted, brought back, and then win, and it was him. And he, was, he really was a beast, so shouts out to him. He did deserve to win that season. I saw some clips on Instagram. I didn't see anything from the episode, but I saw some clips on Instagram where Cody <laughs> kept calling Chelsea Charlie or something like that. That was hilarious. And I pretty much liked everything that Taylor said. I agree with all her answers from the Instagram clip. I did not see the episode, so disclaimer. And uh, Jag, uh, nothing, nothing really to say. But Sunday's episode, what came from that one is Angela won HOH, and we saw the HOH competition. I like the HOH competition. It was weird, but, like, it's hard for me to explain why I thought it was weird. But I'm glad Angela won. Uh, something that came out of that episode that's very important if you've been watching these reviews is it was the first episode that made me go down, like, the my, my um, likingness, like, 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 how I ranked Brooklyn. Brooklyn was like my number one for all these episodes. And I, I still think Brooklyn is my winner pick. And she's probably still my favorite low key. But in that Sunday episode, I started to dislike her a little bit because... Or like her less, should I say. I started to like her less because I didn't like how she was all over Angela for picking her twice. I Like, we heard about on live feeds that she was mad at Angela for something like that. But twice, it was only twice. I could understand if it was three times that Angela picked her. But Angela picked her literally twice. And Brooklyn was all over her case crying and stuff. And I'm just like, come on now. This is just ridiculous. This is this this makes her seem entitled. And not gonna lie, she probably she came off as entitled already. But it was like in a boss way. Like, I'm a boss. But then it came off as whiny entitled, you know? So, my... I started to dislike her a little bit, or like her less. But let's get to today's episode. This episode starts off with the fallout from the nomination ceremony, which, that's another thing I can say. This is so weird that everyone knows it's Quinn, but we still have this Angela, AI, Sam, who she nominated. We got Mackenzie on the block. We got Tucker on the block. And we got Cedric on the block. That's something else I can say. Cedric is an idiot. Why did he decide to go on the block? Like... Your numbers are not 100%, okay? No one's numbers at this point is 100% where you say, okay, I can go on there and I can just stay. Like, no. And, like, almost all the house targets are out except Angela. And Angela was HOH, so she's safe. So Cedric was an... Okay, when I say idiot, I don't actually mean that he's an idiot. I like Cedric. I just meant, like, bad decision. That's what I meant, actually. Like, uh, and then Tucker's on the block, and I was really rooting for him to win veto. Angela wants Tucker to win. She's rooting for him because now she's like super team Tucker because of what happened uh, last week, I guess, when he removed her from the block. Then something else that came out of Sunday's episode and also in this episode, Rubina is a character now. She's actually on the show. I'm so happy. Like she got DRs. She even got her own segment on this show. On this episode with her reaching for the fridge and jumping, which I was impressed because Rubina is really short. Like I think she's like 
four foot nine, and she actually could jump and get something off the top of the fridge. That was impressive. I ain't gonna lie. So shouts out to my girl Rubina because she's finally arrived on Big Brother 26. It only took her like 12 episodes. She was like warming up. But like she also might be going home. So we get the scene of Quinn explaining his power, and it's super overpowered at this point. Like, pretty much Angela has the room. Angela has the HOH room. Uh, Quinn has all the power. He has literally all the power. The only thing that he can't do, I don't think he breaks a tie if there's a tie vote in the end. I think Angela still breaks that tie, but what's the odds of that happening? No, I'll say that and watch it actually be a tie. We see this meeting with everybody in the collective. There's eight people, which I think the best way to remember who's the collective is remember that it's the Pentagon. Well, I guess you'd have to know who's in the Pentagon. It, it's kind of funny because the collective is eight. And then of those eight, we have the Pentagon, which is five. And of those five, we have the core, which is three. So that's kind of <laughs> like, it's like boom, boom, boom. Like, I don't know. I, I find it kind of cool. But the collective have a meeting. Brooklyn comes up with this plan to put Rubina on the block so that Tucker can maybe not use the veto or something like that. It became a show long thing of Brooklyn saying, let's put Rubina on the block. She likes Rubina, but she feels like for the betterment of her alliance and her game, she might have to sacrifice Rubina. Which is unfortunate because those were my two favorites. I don't know. They might still be my two favorites. I like Tucker a lot, I feel. And I actually do like Quinn. I know a lot of people turn on Quinn. And he is extra. He is playing it up for the camera. But so is fucking Tucker. Tucker don't actually talk like this. Like, how he, like, does his voice and, like, you know, like, <laughs> come on now. Well, maybe he does, actually. Maybe he is like that. I don't know. But Quinn is clearly playing it up, you know, so... And we see a segment with Tucker, and Tucker, we kind of get a little insight with him. Tucker, number one alliance from this episode, what we can see is Joe. He asked Joe to form a final two. He even compared it to, like, their opposites, and he feels like they could be, like, uh, Dan and, who was it, Ian, I think? Dan and Ian, or Dan and someone? I forgot who it was. Memphis? I don't know. But he said no one expected them to work together. Or maybe it wasn't even Dan. I'm starting to I'm starting to get confused. But I don't know. He wants to work with Joe, is what I'm trying to say. And this really just sets up the veto uh, picks. We have the four people plan, which is the HOH, even though she has no power, and the three nominees. Uh, Quinn doesn't automatically get to play, even though he's the fake HOH and everyone knows it. He has to rely on getting picked. So we have Angela, HOH, three nominees, Tucker, Cedric, Mackenzie. They pick out the first name and it's Tucker. And I feel like that's why they showed the previous segment is to explain why Tucker picked Joe. So Tucker picks Joe. And then the next name is Cedric. And Cedric picks Brooklyn, who's his Pentagon member, like close alliance member. I feel like Cedric might be closer to Chelsea, but he picked Brooklyn just so that it doesn't seem, you know, sketchy or whatever. But I'm pretty sure everyone knows that he's super close with Chelsea. But I even don't even know who Cedric's closest ally is, to be honest, because I feel like Brooklyn and Chelsea are number ones, but I don't know who Cedric's number one is. But I don't. I think he values Chelsea over Brooklyn, though. But then I hear that he has a crush on, like, he feels like Brooklyn is his type, but he knows that she's married. He's not, like, trying to get with her. Like, I don't know. I don't know. She's got three kids. I don't know. So we get to the veto comp. It's called Binary Bridge. I like this comp, actually. It's tournament style. So there's 1v1v1. And whoever has the fastest winning time out of the three that win, they get a bye to the finals. And the other two have to compete against each other. So this bridge was long. All right? This was a long bridge. I ain't gonna lie. I probably would not have done good at this comp. Like, I... I salute them for doing it, but I probably would have got used to it. But by the time I got used to it, the other person would have probably already won. <laughs> so you have to step on these bridges, on these uh, these blocks on the bridge, and they light up green. If they light up red, then you have to start over. But here's the thing is they don't even show the winning pattern at first. Like, I would think that you would see the winning pattern and then have to, like, repeat it. No, you have to just go off of just guessing. It's like you're just doing trial and error. You go, and if one turns red, you have to start over. You have to remember what's turned green up until that point. And they also have the same pattern. So matchups were random, and the first matchup we saw was Cedric and Brooklyn. How ironic. The, like, Brooklyn literally, or Cedric literally picked Brooklyn so that she could take him down. 
if she won, and now they have to go against each other, and one of them has to be eliminated. Cedric won it three minutes and 13 seconds. So Cedric advances, and he has the fastest time up to this point. The next matchup is Mackenzie and Angela. This is funny because these two are rivals. They don't like each other. Uh, this one, Mackenzie got the win at 7 minutes and 15 seconds, so Cedric still has the fastest time. And then the last one was Tucker v. Joe. So, again, that's the whole reason why Tucker picked Joe so that Joe could use, possibly use the veto on him, and now one of them has to be eliminated. So, Joe didn't even really seem like he wanted to win because he's in a good spot and he wants to stay in that good spot. And he, To be honest, Joe might be in the best spot. He might be in the best spot in the whole house. I mean, like, maybe T-Core. T-Core or Joe, I would say, are in the best spot. This was a really fast round, though. Uh, Tucker, he flew through this one. And he finished in less than two minutes. I think it was one minute, 55 seconds. And at this point, I realized, oh, wow, the three, the three, final three are the three people on the block. So we are guaranteed another veto winner from someone on the block. Uh, Tucker got the fastest time, so now we see Cedric versus McKenzie. This was a funny round because Cedric was copying off McKenzie, and McKenzie kind of called him out. And I didn't even realize, like, I knew that they had the same pattern, but I didn't even realize, like, they people were cheating. But Cedric was openly cheating, and then when she called him out, he kind of just, like, stepped when I was like, go ahead. Like, wanted her to go. Like, I was like, but then McKenzie made a mistake, and she stepped one, and then Tucker knew that, or Cedric knew that one was false, so then he went and... Cedric got the win, and this was in less than two minutes, too. I think it was a minute, 32 seconds. So now we see the big matchup, like, big fight feel. The match everyone wants to see is Cedric versus Tucker. This was intense. This was really intense. This would have been good to see live. I wish we got to see this live, because we would have all been on the edge of our seats. Really, like, this was, like... This was this was close and this was really intense. This was good. And Tucker ended up getting the win. We don't know how long it took, but this was good. Like I really enjoyed this. And it was funny because when they all cheered, because you know, when someone wins, you cheer. Chelsea did not. She just looked straight face. And I thought that was hilarious. And I felt like these two were going so hard to win because they both have I don't want to say the word ego because the ego insinuates bad. But they but pride. They both have pride, and they didn't want to lose to one another. I would say that, especially like well, I'm not gonna say especially one of them. But Cedric volunteered to go on the block, be and because he thinks he can beat Tucker, and Tucker screams out loud that he thinks he can win all these competitions. So yeah, I feel like they both have a lot of pride. But afterwards, Cedric was really like sportsmanship, saying "Good game, good game, baby, gotcha, gotcha, blah blah blah," and <laughs> Tucker was. He seemed like he was pretty mellow about it, so that was cool. Afterwards, Rubina and Tucker celebrate, and I don't know, Tucker made a joke. I forgot what it was, so, but it was funny. And then, like, we see this, like, a little thing of Tucker saying, oh, he might not use the veto, blah, 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 that went all around. He did use it, and he said that he always was going to use it. Thank God, because that would have been insane if he did. Quinn actually told Cedric that, and Brooklyn, that, Tucker wasn't going to use it, but Tucker never said he wasn't going to use it. At least I don't think. I think he was just, like, saying, like, he might not use it because he wants to take out Cedric himself. <laughs> Tucker's out of his mind, though, because, like, he says, like, Cedric's number one target. No, Tucker, you're number one target, but, buddy, like, <laughs> you better be lucky you won that veto because we want you in jury. We want you for the rest of this whole season, and the way we get that is if you go to jury. I'm hoping that jury starts after the fifth person's eliminated, so we need Tucker to last at least one more round of eviction. But that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to leave it a like, comment, subscribe, share it on all forms social media. Let's have a discussion. Let's talk about this season. And until next time, guys, catch you later.